Hey guys, welcome back to Pine Haven Acres. Today I am doing an exciting project and I want to bring you along and show you the process and what I'm doing. So um, I am going to Silver Fox National Show in April and I want to have some juniors that are almost at the top of the class age-wise. So to do that I need to breed my rabbits next week and um, have them born next month. Uh, which will be in the middle of November, which is very cold here in Wisconsin. And as you know, my rabbits are outside. So my project for today is to build a hutch that I can keep inside of our insulated garage to keep them a little bit warmer and closer to the house in case I need to uh, supplement their heating a little bit more while they're still young. So um, this is kind of my rough draft, a very rough draft. Um, <laughs> the drawing gives you an idea of what I'm building, but it's mostly in my head. Um, it'll be similar to the most recent cage design that Tealstone Homestead um, has made recently. So um, I'll just show you myself building it and kind of explain things as we get toward the end. Um, but I'm hoping to make it about two feet by six feet and um, have multiple doors and be able to divide the cage off into different sections um, and smaller cages once the rabbits get older and I need to start separating them. Um, it is a double stacker cage so I will have trays with this um, and yeah that's about it so let's get started. The first thing that I'm doing is cutting my 2x4s down in half. Um, I'll be keeping the 2x4 um, standard size for my legs but everything else I need to cut down so it's not so heavy and bulky um, and yeah let's get started <laughs> the two end walls done and now for the challenging part of putting in the middle pieces and here's what it's looking like now I have it to the point that I drew it out on my paper so it's a little bit bigger than two by six because my cage that I'm putting in there is 2 by 6 and then I have spaces for the trays so we'll have some trays down here on the ground and then I'll put trays on top of the wire cage so there'll be a tray right here all the going across so far um, it was pretty easy to assemble it's not the sturdiest thing in the world. Um, I'm sure once we screw in the wire cages that'll pull everything together, um, but I might cut out some little triangle pieces and put them up here in the corners 
um, just to sturdy it up a little bit. But this part is done and now we're gonna start on the wire cages. I've cut out all of my wire pieces for the cage. I have 16 gauge PVC coated half inch by one inch floor wire. It's black. And then the rest of the wire is 16 gauge one inch by two inches. And you can see I have several rolls out here. Um, these two big rolls are the side walls. This is the top and then those two pieces are um, the short side walls. So I will be attaching all of that wire together using J-clips and this is the tool that I'm using to do that. This will be interesting because I've never fully constructed an all-wire cage before and um, because the side walls are a little bit flimsy uh, it's gonna be challenging to get the cage square. So we'll see how it turns out. Um, ideally, I would not be using one inch by two inch uh, dimensions for the side walls because babies can definitely slip through that. Um, but this is all that our hardware store had um, currently. So I decided just to go with that. And then um, I have some scrap pieces with smaller measurements that I will use as like a baby saver a couple inches up from the bottom um, to prevent babies from falling out. So I'll show you kind of a close-up of what it looks like when I am using the J-clips. So this up here is my sidewall. This black is my floor. The sidewall was half an inch too short um, to be two feet. So we have a quarter inch gap on both sides at the bottom corners, which is no big deal. Um, but it clips together tight uh, the rest of the way up the wall. So what I do, I'll start over here. So I lift up the floor, and this is my tool. I hook it on both, and then I squeeze, and it curls that metal piece around there nice and tight. And there we go. Now they are together. I've been kind of doubling up on the corners and then I do like every other or um, I skip to okay so this one I don't know if you guys saw that it only caught around one wire not a big deal I'm just gonna use my pliers to get that one off and then we'll keep going
my dad and I just put the cage in and it fits nice and snug. I attached the cage with these washers here and a screw. And then as you can see, it's only touching the wood on the floor in this middle beam to help support the middle so that it doesn't sag. But otherwise, the wood is on the outside of the cage all the way around so that waste does not build up underneath the rabbits on the wire. I've cut two holes for doors. I'm debating about cutting one in the middle, but we'll see. Um, I cut them big enough to fit a full-size nest box in the door, and um, it's four inches up from the floor, so we have a little bit of a lip there, and I'll be putting the smaller gauge, um, or smaller size wire along the bottom to hold the babies in so that they don't fall out. And there it is. It's looking pretty good. And I'll see you guys um, tomorrow for some more progress updates. So this is the finished product. Basically what we missed uh, in the videos that were deleted is I finished putting in the long cages into the frame and then I cut out the doors and I got these blue plastic pieces that you can clip on to your door frame so that the rabbits don't get cut on the wire. Um, I got those at a rabbit show. There was a supply dealer there um, and he was selling those. So I got some of those. Um, and then for the locks, all I used was a hook and eye lock. And I just hooked it on there and I did not use the eye part. Just the hook part. Um, but these are the spring loaded type. So... I have to pull that back and then it comes off. And those have been working really nice. And then what I did was put in this divider wall. This is just a metal sheet and uh, it came in one of my older cages so I just spray painted it and um, stuck it in here. It wasn't quite tall enough so I do have some wire uh, to kind of fill that gap up at the top. And then the top one up here has a sheet of plexiglass. This was partly because that's all that I had really besides plywood to fill that up. Um, but also I wanted to do a little experiment and see how the rabbits would react being able to see a neighbor. Um, and you can kind of see the fogginess right here. That's where they've scratched it up. Um, so I think depending on who I put in here, it either stresses them out or they enjoy having a companion to look at, um, but just not get to. And then if you know about plexiglass, you know that it's really brittle when you are drilling through it. So I did have a little section in the back crack off. So I just have wire to fill that. Um, and then again, wire at the top because it wasn't tall enough. But overall, I think they're both working out pretty good. Um, and then I did end up getting some metal pieces. I think they're for insulation. But I just have that running across to help hold up the floor and support it a little bit better. Um, like I said in 
earlier this in this video I just have the one board going across on the floor to support it and if I were to do this cage again instead of that I would do two supports I would put one in the middle of this section and one over there instead of having just the one in the middle um, the floor definitely needed a little bit more support it was sagging a little bit so I have those metal pieces and they're doing a pretty good job on the bottom I actually have two making a cross and that's even better I also used some scrap wire and put together an easy hay rack so you can see back here we have some hay and this is what it looks like from the back side super easy and convenient um, and that just helps keep the hay off the floor so it doesn't fall through and into the trays as much overall this PVC coated wire has been pretty nice um, because it's slippery on the surface the waste and such cleans off very easily um, but as you can see the brown parts is where the rabbits have chewed it off and it's now rusting so that would be the only downside to this PVC coated wire here um, the rabbits do chew on them and they've only been in this hutch for probably two months so that's not that great um, but it is pretty comfortable for their feet and like I said it's really easy to clean because it does have that slipperiness to it and then I have trays for this cage and these trays I just got used secondhand um, from an animal swap so I don't know where they got them but they're super nice and deep you can see my hand here um, it's probably a good two and a half three inches um, which is a lot deeper than most trays you can buy today for animal uh, cages but they are not exactly two feet wide they're a little bit smaller than that so I do have some gaps that aren't filled in um, but the rabbits tend to go to the bathroom in the same spot so um, that gap isn't really an issue and then I have them down here on the floor um, I did put cardboard and newspaper along the bottom underneath them to try to protect our concrete in the garage here. Um, and then I do have some pine shavings that come out of the trays um, for some extra areas that need to be protected. Um, their water bowls sometimes drip and come down here um, or if they go to the bathroom in, in the far corner. So that is the cage. I think it turned out great and I'm loving that it's so close to the house so I can check on my baby bunnies a lot easier than if they were down by the rest of the rabbits um, and overall this hutch worked out great. Thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed today's video please give us a big thumbs up and if you haven't already click that subscribe button to see more content like this.